Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Did you know that there's plenty options in Studio One to adjust the appearance settings? For example, you can greatly increase the contrast of the grid and also of the arrangement windows and how you can do that, I want to show you today. So before we start here, I just want to show you, this is the general appearance of Studio One. This is the default factory preset. And at the end of this video, your Studio One is going to look more like this, which I much prefer. Hopefully you will as well. Greater contrast, easy on the eyes because of the dark background and clear readability because of the good white separation. And also you can see the grid shine through the events. So the bar lines are visible at all times in the arrangement that I find especially useful. Let's start with this behavior because it's not located where all of the other appearance preferences are found. So if you want that same preference active, then you need to go to Studio One up here where it says Studio One in the menu bar and then preferences and under preferences you want to go to advanced and editing. Here you want to scroll down until you see draw events translucent grid shines through in the event appearance chapter. Let me show you what happens when this is not engaged and pay attention to these blue events here on the side to see this clearly. When this is not active then Sure, the events are a bit brighter, which you might prefer at first glance, but notice how the bar grid is no longer visible. So if you try to move these events around the timeline, this is much harder all of a sudden because you have no reference point. Instead, you should always engage this, in my opinion. And sure, the events are a little bit darker for now, but you can still adjust that in the actual appearance preferences. Those I want to show you next. So right now we're seeing the default appearance preferences of Studio One. The only thing we've changed is that the grid is now shining through the events. And to adjust everything else, we go up here again, where it says Studio One in the menu bar and to the preferences. And under general, we should find appearance. Now this is kind of where the magic happens because in this area, you can set how Studio One really looks and feels. First up, we have the Huey shift. This allows you to color Studio One in a specific tone, if you'd like. Notice how this is also adjusting the color of the buttons, for example, here in the marker track. And we can also adjust saturation and luminance for the entire background. Now, what's really cool is that when luminance is inverted, you can see how the entirety of the colors is inverted in the software, also the text. So now the text is dark and you have that on white background before and by default, you have dark background with white text. And this way, everybody finds their preference that's the easiest to read for their specific eyes. And um, yeah, you can also adjust the contrast. Usually I set that to the maximum so that the separation of the tracks in the track list is as clear as it gets. And you can also set luminance and contrast for the arrangement. So the luminance would determine whether you have white or dark background in the note editor and the arrangement window. And you can also set the contrast, which is quite important for grid visibility. I usually crank that to the maximum as well in order to ensure that the grid is at its most visible. For me, the grid is just a very important anchor and reference point when I'm editing in Studio One. You can also adjust the plugin background and that is specific to all native Studio One plugins that don't come with a customized user interface. Analog Delay would be an example of a Studio One plugin that has a customized interface. It will not be affected by any of these settings. But if we look at any of the others that have no graphical user interface that's customized in any way, like the auto filter or the beat delay, pretty much the majority of plugins actually, and you set a preference here, this will drastically change the look. If I switch this from, let's say, colored to light, now we have a white plugin right here, which looks kind of dope, I have to say, or dark. You can really adjust this to your own taste. And the same thing is possible for the score view. So maybe if I just show these notes quickly in a score view, just for example's sake, and I go back to the appearance preferences, if I now switch score from light to dark, you can see that I'm inverting the color scheme for the score view. I much prefer it in dark, but that's just my personal take. 
Now, if you don't want to set all of these appearance preferences yourself, you can actually load a preset and that could either be a preset that you've already stored yourself or it could be a user preset and you can get those directly from Personas Exchange, including my very own color scheme that you see right here if you're a Studio One Plus member. So if you're a Studio One Plus member, you go here to Studio One's browser and here under the clouds tab, you should find Personas Exchange. You can double click that to log in. And under color palettes, you'll find a ton of different color schemes that have been configured and curated by other enthusiastic Studio One users. Now, if you use the search up here, you can search GBY color and this should take you straight to the GBY color scheme for 2024. I'm doing one for every year, pretty much. You can install that with one single click down here. And once you've done so, you should be able to select this preset right away here from the preset manager inside of the appearance preferences. So hopefully this is going to make your Studio One experience a lot more colorful. And thank you for watching.